everybody out there on Wiper Street. You already know what it is. Salute everybody. What's going on, y'all? Welcome back to Steve Booster GS. We got another scorecard reaction for you. You already know what it is. We got Sky Saturdays. Uh, Sky Daddy Triggered is going to be today. And before I get into this, you know what my favorite part about Sky is? Is it that she sounds like a tortured Evanescence? A little bit, but not entirely. Uh, is it because she makes me watch traumatic Disney deaths to relive my childhood? No, I don't like that part at all. Uh, it's because she finally got like a little bit of buzz going. And like, like, let me put this in perspective for you. I start getting a little bit of momentum. I have a marketing plan for putting merch out and putting out collaborative projects and stuff like that to continue to grow. She gets a little bit of a buzz and she's putting together care packages for listeners of her music who are going through shit that need it with like masks and shit like that. Like I think Sky is just like my, I, I think I like her because she's just a better person than I am. And that is important to me when choosing to like really support somebody. So shouts out to Sky, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button. Uh, let's do this. She also has a little blurb here. I didn't read this yet, but I did see <clears throat> that it looked like something to be read. So we're going to do Triggered by Sky Daddy. Uh, she says, we see it all too often. Rape being used as a tool to assert dominance, power, and status. And it's usually by some pathetic fuck that has a god complex or false sense of entitlement. In this song, I show first-hand look, I show a first-hand look into the aftermath of sexual assault and how debilitating it really is. Um... I kind of like that we get like a little blurb before the song. I, I feel bad now. I don't know if the other ones had that. We just missed it. Uh, I am going to make me make sure. I do want to make this full screen. She usually has a video to go along with it. Volume looks good. So let's get it. This is Sky Daddy Triggered. Spoilers, I didn't see the movie. I shouldn't take them so serious. I don't think they mean any harm. But it would sicken you too if it happened to you when you had to relive every part. Hey, come with flashbacks, the panic attacks. How long does that shit last? I'm losing myself by the day, see. And I know you all think that I'm crazy. Alright, I love digging into Sky's lyrics. So let's do this. Let's let's break this down. Let's take it back. It happened to you when you had to relive every part It come with flashbacks, the panic attacks How long does that shit last? I'm losing myself by the day, see And I know you all think that I'm crazy Right there So like that, that is a huge Like that whole gaslighting type situation Where Because you may or may not be unable to comprehend or understand Somebody else's suffering You write it off as that person is crazy Like that is a that that's a fucking very 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 real thing like and it's not just with like she's talking about sexual abuse here but it could be fucking anything it could be like somebody being bipolar or literally any type of ailment someone could have if you don't understand it it's very often dismissed as like that bitch is crazy like you've heard that a million fucking times instead of like taking four seconds to have some empathy and kind of like understand where the person is coming from by the day see and I know you all think that I'm crazy there's a demon that show up with the foot of my bed it just fingers from memories that fucked up my head the night terrors ain't nothing but a real bad dream quit being that goddamn drama queen I steal myself in a soundproof room so no one can hear how loud I scream hold on we're that ugh. terrors ain't nothing but a real bad dream quit being that goddamn drama queen stop being a goddamn drama queen like yo she's talking like I don't know what my audience is right so I don't know how you guys feel when I dig into these type of topics and these types of conversations, but like I'm not backing away from this at all. I don't care if this like isn't the type of shit that like you're normally into. I find this music to be fucking incredibly important because what she's doing is she's taking these things that are like taboo to talk about or like real shit that people are going through and putting it to dope fucking music. Like, I don't know. I think that that's really important. The demons that show up with the foot of my bed are just fingers from memories that fucked up my head. The night terrors ain't nothing but a real bad dream. Quit being. The night terrors ain't nothing but a real bad dream. So she's like, she's given what she's going through and the responses that she gets probably from loved ones and people she cares about. Like, 
I'm having night terrors. I'm getting told those are just real bad dreams. Stop being a goddamn drama queen. Like, instead of... Jesus fucking Christ. I hope this wasn't coming from her parents. Like, that's probably the number one thing in my personal experience is, like, people who shouldn't have fucking kids having fucking kids and never put in the time to fucking learn about human psyche and the fucking damage that being dismissive like that can be. It's probably more about society, but as a fucking straight white male, I don't deal with too much of that shit in society. I am aware of that. But I did have the whole broken home thing too. So I am able to see it from that perspective. That goddamn drama queen. I feel myself in a soundproof room so no one can hear how loud I scream. But you don't think it's as bad as it seems because you never dealt with PTSD. Frozen in your tracks, take a visit to the back. Alright. Sonically, this transition did not sound well to me. But fucking lyrically this is incredible hold on let's, let's hear this for what i'm talking about here the imagery of that like the imagery of that is fucking amazing like like it's it's so fucking real like i i see that headphones on into a fucking pillow i don't have a soundproof room but like just screaming into a fucking pillow and shit like that like you should get me in my my personal trauma bag but you don't think it's as bad as it seems because you never dealt with PTSD. Frozen in your that that transition right there i don't know if it was like a little bit off cue or what it was but it, it seemed like it rushed into that and the recording levels are different take a visit to the past to see the devil Cigarettes. You know how many people smoke? Approximately one billion and just about everybody I know. You think you know, but you don't. When someone's broke, you can't just heavy sigh and roll your eyes like if they ain't physically ill and they must be a liar. You I don't think I'd get the cigarette bar uh, unless part of the physical trauma was like parent or lover or whatever the case may be, like putting cigarette butts out on somebody, causing that to trigger. That could be what she means by that. Um, and then I want to bring someone's broke. You can't just heavy sigh and roll your eyes like if they ain't physically ill, then they must be alive. They ain't physically like, yeah, there's so many sicknesses that you can't see. It, it, it's, it's repeating a lot of the same like concepts and like reinforcing what she's trying to say with like the PTSD. Like, PTSD is one of those things that you can get diagnosed with that can happen to you in your life, but you can't necessarily like it's not every PTSD isn't a war veteran on the side of a road with a peg leg. You know what I'm saying? Like it's not it's it's not necessarily written on someone's face. Alright. Sonically this part is not mixed or mastered seemingly at all, but let's fo let's look at the lyrics. Fire if everything around you became a threat And everyone surrounding you said get over it It becomes unbearable to live in So that was almost like Like that didn't rap or flow or at all well That was almost like an interlude Like a break, like a fourth wall break Like a, a hop out of the melody Hop out of the flow And spaz out real quick like, people, like, rappers do that shit all the time, where they'll be like, I'm not fucking rapping no more, like, fuck you, fight me, like, blah, blah, blah. This is, that sound, that part right there, because it was so off-key, seemed, seemed less like she was trying to continue the rap flow, and more like a fourth wall break into, fuck you, this is what I'm going through, and then, if I had to guess, we're probably about to transition back into either a rap flow or a melody on the vocals. Alright, so the transition on the beat from there into like this hook again sounds sonically way better than the first one. So I do think the first one where I pointed it out was more of like where on the beat it picked up into. Like maybe she sung or rapped a little bit too far into the beat that I didn't have enough time to transition into the melody. Because um, this one sounded clean as shit. If you pick up on this. You don't believe reliving each nightmare on an everyday basis. I don't think I can do this. I don't think I can take this. 
first of all, the fucking the the delivery, the pain in her voice and shit like that, like that it sounds very very authentic. I like that. But watch this transition from here into the the actual melody singing as opposed to the first one sounds way more crisp and clear. When she starts doing actual music videos, I like you I can tell just from like the TikTok shit that she did that like this music video this this video for me is a miss because I didn't see uh Maleficent to begin with, so I don't really know the story behind it and how it relates to what's being said. But if she starts making music videos, anything like the TikTok shit that she has going on, like it's gonna be haunting. Like it, it's literally gonna be a problem. Like you are going to you, it's going to escalate this to the next level, I guarantee it. Not on fire. Hold on. Let's get this whole flip. Best to see the devil's dirty deed. Leave his mark all down your back. Oh. You set my mind on fire. Sparks flying, not rewired. You left me no desire. Broken and uninspired. I feel you all conspire. Left all alone with liars. Hopeless so I get higher. That was the best part of the song for me so far. Like, that was a fucking... I, I almost don't want to say bop because it has too much of, like, a positive connotation to it. As opposed, like, and like this is, like, a serious subject matter. But from, like, a sonic perspective, that part, like, she went the fuck in on that. That that sounded amazing. Broken and uninspired. I feel you all conspire. Left all alone with liars. Hopeless so I get higher. Same thing, that transition right there sounded good, sounded smooth. I really think that first one, there it didn't have enough time to breathe from the previous one to go into it, because the last two that she hit sounded fucking perfect. Is fucking is she just Sephiroth? Like side note, I don't know what the fuck is going on here, but this looks wild. Alright, let's go. There you got it. Sky Daddy triggered. Let's pull up the scorecard. Let's break it down. Let's see how much we really like this. Uh, we are fans. If you haven't picked up on it, welcome to Sky Saturdays. Target audience for this. Uh, yeah, I like this one a lot. I think uh, I think the more we touch on more serious topics, the more opportunity we have to open up a positive dialogue, which I am all about. Like, even if it's not necessarily... Like, it, I don't believe, like, some of the arguments that I read and that I hear about stuff like this is like, hey, this isn't necessarily fucking hip-hop oriented. And I think it's, I think it's bullshit. Like, I really do. Like, hip-hop is an art form. 
and a genre that has grown so fucking vast to not cover fucking mental illness and not cover physical abuse. Like, to not cover things that you personally go through. Not you as an individual, but like you as an artist. Like, that's hip-hop. If it's something that you are exposed to and you are talking about your own personal experience in your own life, that is hip-hop. Everything doesn't have to be whatever it is that's being played on the radio at any given time. Like, it's about being genuine, being authentic, being able to articulate your feelings, your emotions into music or artistry. Like, that's what it's all about. Proper settings, I'm probably never going to get tired of saying this. Uh, she makes music for people who are being broken for some reason. And it's like, it's outlet music. It really is. Like, this is shit that you put your headphones on and scream to. Uh, Ghostwriter. Did I get vibes at anybody? I didn't get any vibes from anything specific on this. Bars or lyrics? I think I think the, the bars and lyrics on this were fucking very, very well written. Um, I'm going to give it a 21. Better than we expected, above and beyond what we thought they could do. There... It wasn't like, like it, it, these, these ones, judging these on, on bars and lyrics, like, the lyrics are just powerful. Like, they, she's saying something. She, like, there's a couple things in there that I felt may have been in there for the reasons uh, of the rhyme scheme. Uh, like, in that, the, the hook that she comes around, like, keep going till I'm tired. Like, the word tired in that part to me sound like it was put there for the rhyme scheme, like, she probably won, like, if she could have came up with something that was a little bit heavier of a word. Like, I feel like tired is kind of like, like a $5 word, as opposed to the emotion she was conveying was like a $20 emotion. There were, there was like two parts like that that I picked up on while we were going. Aside from that, though, subject matter wise, getting the point across how well written the lyrics were, 21 out of 25. I, I, I was, I was fucking with it. Uh, the delivery... With the exception of the original, she did hit a few different flows on here. Um, I do think that the one that we pointed out was really the only hiccup in the very beginning. Other than that, uh, I love the vocals. I loved the the actual flows of the song were, were okay. They, uh, she's this was a little bit more artsy, more poetic than it was like a regular track. Like the bridge, the fourth wall breaks to where she's just talking or screaming. Uh, on the track as opposed to trying to find a pocket to fucking rap on that's all on purpose like that's not like accidental when you hear that it's not like oh this person can't rap on beat like no we've heard tracks where she can rap on beat that's done as an artistic direction not necessarily as oh they lost the pocket does that make sense um with that being said i am going to give this a nine uh, 19 solid flow not their best but nothing terrible only because I had the very first one that we did, that definitely was like the bar was set for the melodicness of it that like put me into it. Uh, the beat selection, 15 out of 15. I, I don't see her missing on the beat selection right now. Uh, sound quality and mixing. S going into the second verse, the vocals did seem uh, different than the first one. And then the, the original transition. So we're going to lose a couple points here. Uh, I'm going to give her an 11 out of 15 for the, the sound quality and the mixing. This has to do with, if you listen to the levels from the lyrics on the first verse and the ones on the second or the transition, it sounds like it was recorded in, at either at two entirely different times with different settings or in two different locations entirely. Like maybe the first one was recorded on one day and then it was done later at a different time. Like it does seem like there was a, a noticeable difference between the, the sound quality. Like it wasn't one recording session that it sounded like between the first to the second. Um, effectiveness, 10 out of 10. Like, the goal here is to start a conversation, to start a dialogue about abuse and nonsense and the way that fucking people who go through things that aren't written on their face are treated and some of the very, very common misconceptions of those people. I think it was good. I think it's definitely going to get their point across. It's probably going to miss... The, like, the target audience is going to be two different people. And she's going to miss 50% of it. Because 50% are going to be the assholes who say those type of things that aren't open to having the discussion. It's going to be wasted on them. 
the people she's going to hit are going to be the people who are in the same position, who are looking for music to relate to because they're going through it, and it's going to hit home with them a thousand percent because it gives them that I'm not alone type vibe. Enjoyability on this? Um, I'm give it an eight. Super enjoyable under specific circumstances. I think, again, as a straight white male, I'm going to get so much out of this, and I'm going to enjoy the music side of it. I love listening to Sky as an artist and being able to dissect where I see growth or where I see room for improvement and kind of predict in my head what the next sound is going to sound like. I think as a 17-year-old victim of sexual abuse, this is going to connect on an entirely different level. You know what I mean? Like, you have to remember who's reviewing it and, like, all I can do is give her a voice to my people who are fucking listening to this as opposed to who I, I think necessarily the target audience is they're probably going to give this a 15 out of 10. You know what I mean? Like the second you hear somebody talking about something that you personally go through. So with that being said, uh, 84 out of 100, that's my score. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Leave a comment below. Do me a favor. Subscribe to her channel. Hit up her Instagram. She's doing a lot of cool shit. Uh, if you know anybody that you think could benefit from this music, I also encourage you to share it with them. So thanks for coming. As always, it's always love. And I will catch you on the next one.